ever feel like you're back in grade school, oh. even though you're at work? Oh, yeah. You know that feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're being treated more like a kid than a competent adult. Totally. I'll never forget like this one meeting early in my career. Oh, tell me. I was running just a few minutes behind rush hour, you know, the drill. Yeah, yeah. And when I finally got there, the VP made me sing I'm a Little Teapot in front of everyone. Yo. I'm talking everyone in the entire meeting. Oh my gosh, that's brutal. It was mortifying. Yeah. And you know what? Uh. Turns out this kind of thing is way more common than you might think. Really? Oh yeah. It's like this symptom of what Zylvia Ola calls the corporate kindergarten in her book. Yeah, I've heard of that. And that's exactly what we're going to be diving into today. So yeah, get ready. We're about to explore the wild world of corporate infantilization. I am so ready for this. We're talking those head scratching training exercises. Oh, don't even get me started. And don't even get me started on those endless pizza parties that just try to gloss over all the deeper issues. You know? Right. Like pizza is great and all, oh, for but it doesn't fix the fact that you're overworked. And let's be honest, probably underpaid too. You hit the nail on the head. It's a topic that's so relevant, especially now with so many people really rethinking their careers and what they want out of work. Oh, absolutely. Like we've got the great resignation still going strong. Yeah. You've got millennials and Gen Z demanding something different from the workplace. Right, right. And let's not forget, burnout levels are through the roof. And Ola's book makes a really interesting point, which is that a lot of this yeah. stems from these traditional corporate cultures that stifle our very adult need for autonomy, for mastery, for a sense of purpose. It makes complete sense. Yeah. It's not that we want to, like, throw tantrums in meetings or anything. Oh, no, no, of course not. But there's a huge difference between being treated like a responsible adult. Totally. And being managed as if we can't, you know, tie our own shoelaces. Oh, 100%. It's mm -hmm. like they think we need to be babysat through every little thing. Right. It's demeaning. Exactly. And speaking of which, you know, Ola's book is just packed with these examples. Oh, I bet. And honestly, some of them made me wonder if this stuff is really happening in real workplaces. I know, right? Like one that really got me was this story about a company. What'd they do? They made employees create a paper chain. A paper chain? You know, like the ones we used to make in like elementary school. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, to track their sales numbers. Okay, so I mean, on the surface, that sounds kind of harmless. Right. Maybe even a little fun, nostalgic even. Yeah. But is it really the best way to motivate a team of professionals? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, seriously. I'm not sure I'm convinced. I mean, it might seem kind of harmless on the surface, right? Yeah. But I think it really speaks to like a deeper issue. Okay, I'm listening. Think about it, this kind of activity, you know, making paper chains. Yeah. It can actually create this sense of learned helplessness. Learned helplessness. Okay, that sounds kind of intense for a paper chain. Right. What exactly does that mean? So it's this psychological thing, right, where people start to feel like, they don't have any control over their environment, like mm. their actions, their decisions. They don't really matter. Mm. So put yourself in their shoes for a second. Okay. You're in a workplace where you're constantly being treated like a child. Right. Your input, it's not really valued, was... and your decisions are always being questioned. Yeah, I can see how that would be demoralizing. Right. It's like you're being undermined at every turn. Exactly. That and way. over time, you start to feel like there's just no point in even trying. Well, yeah, you just kind of give up. Exactly. And it's not just about your own individual motivation either. Right. Because if you're not motivated, you're not going to be doing your best work. Exactly. And that can impact the whole company, right? Makes sense. Like their bottom line. So it's not just bad for morale, it's bad for business. Exactly. When employees feel infantilized, they're less likely to be engaged. Mm -hmm. They're less likely to be creative. Right. And they're definitely less likely to go above and beyond. Yeah, they're just going through the motions. Exactly. Checking the boxes. It's like they're stuck, you know, in this perpetual state of childhood. Mm, interesting. Unable to fully develop their potential. Right, like they're being held back. Exactly. And they can't really contribute at the level they're capable of, you know? It's like they're not being given the chance to really shine. Exactly. And, you know, what's so fascinating about Ola's perspective is how her own background plays into this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Tell me more about that. So she spent years working in hotels in the UAE. Wow. Okay. That's a very specific experience. 
It is. And it gave her this like front row seat to some pretty intense examples of infantilization. Oh, I bet. The hotel industry is notorious for that kind of thing. It is. And her research there, particularly on staff accommodations. Yeah, tell me about that, because that's something I've always wondered about those company dorms and stuff. Right. So it's pretty common for staff to live in these company provided accommodations. Yeah. And Ola found that the level of control and micromanagement, yeah. it often extended beyond the workplace. No way, really. Yeah, it even went into their personal lives. So it's like they're never really off the clock. Exactly. Like imagine this. Curfews. What? Seriously, curfews. Restru curfews, restrictions on guests. Oh, come on. Even meaning permission to like rearrange the furniture in your own room. Are you kidding me? That's insane. Right. And while some companies try to present this as a perk. Right. Like, oh, we provide housing. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, at what cost? Exactly. Ola found that these types of living situations, they can actually be incredibly stifling. I can only imagine. And they can have lasting psychological effects. Because you're never really free, are you? Exactly. It's yeah. like this constant feeling of being watched, right. judged, yeah. even in your own personal space. It's like they're invading your privacy. Exactly. And that can really wear down your sense of autonomy. For sure. Your sense of independence. Right. And then it makes it even harder to assert yourself as an adult at work. Exactly. It's like this vicious cycle, you know? If you're stuck in this loop of feeling infantilized both at work and outside of work. Exactly. And it's a dynamic that's often overlooked. Because we don't necessarily think about what's happening outside of work hours. Right. Exactly. But once you see it, you start to notice it everywhere. Yeah, I bet. And the thing is, these infantilizing behaviors, they aren't always intentional. That's true. I've definitely worked with managers who I think had good intentions, but maybe weren't very self-aware. Exactly. Yeah. Like they're clueless about how, how their actions are being perceived. Yeah. yeah, like those team building exercises that are supposed to be fun, but just end up feeling super awkward and forced. Oh, don't even get me started on those. The mandatory fun, the icebreakers, the trust falls. It's all in there. Ola talks about it all. It's like they're trying too hard. Exactly. And you're right. It's often a case of good intentions gone wrong. Yeah. But the problem is that these activities often miss the mark entirely because they're trying to force connection and engagement. Okay. Instead of creating an environment where those things can happen naturally. So it's like putting a Band-Aid on a much deeper issue. Exactly. Instead of addressing the root causes of disengagement. Which might be things like lack of autonomy, lack of meaningful work. Exactly. They're trying to distract people with pizza parties and team building games. Speaking of pizza parties, that's another classic example of corporate infantilization. Oh, tell me about it. The food bribe. Oh, the food bribe. It's so common. Don't get me wrong. I love free food as much as the next person. Who doesn't? But a slice of pizza isn't going to make me forget about the fact that I'm overworked. Right. Or underpaid. Exactly. It's a temporary fix. Right. That doesn't address any of the underlying issues. Okay, so we've talked about the paper chains, the dorm life, the mandatory fun, the pizza bribes. Right, it's a whole smorgasbord of infantilization. It really is, and it's clear that corporate infantilization shows up in a lot of different ways. But what I'm really curious about is why. Like, why do companies do this? That's the million-dollar question, right? It really is. And Ola explores a few possibilities in the book. Okay, I'm all ears. One perspective is that some managers, maybe subconsciously, okay. resort to these infantilizing behaviors because it gives them a sense of control. Interesting. So it's more about them and their own insecurities than it is about the employees. It could be, right? Like, think about it. If you can make people feel small, yeah. dependent... Right. They're less likely to question your authority. Okay, that makes sense, but it also feels kind of cynical, doesn't it? It can be. It can be. And to be fair, I don't think all managers who do this are doing it maliciously. Right. Some of them genuinely believe they're being, you know, motivating. Right. Or even nurturing in their own way. Right. Like with the team building exercises, they really think they're doing something good for team morale. Exactly. But... As Ola points out, true team building, it doesn't come from forcing adults to participate in trust falls. Right. It comes from addressing the underlying issues. Right, like communication breakdowns, lack of trust. Exactly, fostering open communication. Creating a culture of respect where people feel safe to speak up. Exactly. So it's not just about avoiding these obviously infantilizing behaviors. Mm -hmm. It's about creating a workplace where people feel inherently respected. Yes and valued for their contributions. Right, 
Which I think is something that a lot of companies miss the mark on. Absolutely. They get so caught up in the perks and the fun and games yeah. that they forget about the basics. Exactly. And that brings us to a really crucial point. Which is? What can we actually do about this? So we've talked about how corporate infantilization is a real thing. It really is. And it's got like deeper roots than you might think. Yeah. And it can really impact totally. not just employees. Mm-hmm but the company as a whole. Absolutely. But what can we actually do about it? Right. Because it feels kind of overwhelming, to be honest. It can, yeah. Where do we even start? Well, the good news is that Ola's book doesn't just leave us with a diagnosis, right? Okay, good. She actually offers like a pathway forward. Okay, I like that. And it starts with awareness. Recognizing those subtle ways that infantilization kind of creeps into the workplace. So first step, awareness, got it. Exactly. But once we start to like see those patterns yeah how do we actually disrupt them right especially if they're so ingrained in the company culture it's tough right it's a challenge it is it feels like a huge undertaking it can especially if you're like worried about being seen as difficult right or rocking the boat well, you know? sure for sure you don't want to get on anyone's bad side exactly it's a delicate balance it is ola suggests you know Focusing on communication, but I, like respectful but firm communication. Okay, so it's not about being aggressive. No, no, no. It's about being assertive. Exactly. But in a way that's still professional and respectful. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind that. So that might mean, you know, politely declining to participate in those dreaded icebreakers. Oh, thank goodness. Or, you know, if you feel like your input isn't being valued. Yeah. Speaking up. Okay, so picking your battles. Yeah, yeah. But also making sure that your voice is heard. Exactly, exactly. Hey, that makes sense for employees. Yeah. But what about for the people in charge? Right. The leaders, the managers. Yeah, what of them? What can they do to create this more adult-like work environment? I think it starts with a real fundamental mindset shift. Okay, so how do you change your mindset? Instead of seeing employees as, like, passive recipients of orders yeah they need to be viewed as active participants in the company's success okay so there needs to be this recognition that everyone's in it together it's a partnership it is not it... this like top-down hierarchy exactly trust your team to do their jobs okay so less micromanaging way less micromanaging more empowering more empowering exactly Give them the autonomy to make decisions. Okay, so give them some ownership over their work. Exactly, and create opportunities for them to learn and grow. So it's not just about giving them more responsibility. Right. It's about giving them the support and resources to actually succeed in those roles. 100%. That makes a lot of sense. Right. And this approach, you can even apply it to like rewards and recognition too. Okay, so we're moving beyond the pizza parties. We're moving beyond the pizza parties. Okay, I'm intrigued. It's about you know, recognizing contributions in a way that feels genuine okay. and meaningful. So how do you do that? So it could be professional development opportunities. Okay. Yeah. Investing in your employees' growth. Exactly. Or flexible work arrangements. Oh, that's a big one these days. Huge. Right. Or even just like a sincere and specific thank you. It's amazing how far a little bit of recognition can go. Right. It's about treating people like valued members of the team. Yes. Not just cogs in a machine. Exactly, exactly. And you know what I love about this approach? What's that? It's not just about creating a happier workforce. Right. It's about creating a more successful business. Exactly, because when people feel respected, yeah. valued, mm -hmm. they're going to be more engaged, right. more productive. Makes sense. More likely to go above and beyond. It's a win-win for everyone. Exactly. This has been a really eye-opening conversation. It's a fascinating topic, isn't it? It really is. And it's amazing how something as like, simple as treating people like adults mm -hmm. can have such a profound impact on the workplace. It really can. So for anyone listening out there who's feeling stuck in a corporate kindergarten, yeah. you're not alone. Definitely not. And there are ways to advocate for yourself. Yes. And create a more fulfilling work experience. Absolutely. And if you're a leader. Yeah. Challenge yourself to rethink those old school management practices. And ditch them. Embrace a culture of respect, trust, and autonomy. Yes. And watch your team thrive. Exactly. Olo's book, The Corporate Kindergarten. Great book. It's a must read for anyone who wants to understand these dynamics. Absolutely. And create a more human-centered workplace. Couldn't agree more. It's a fascinating and insightful read. It is.
So that's it for today's deep dive into the corporate kindergarten. Great discussion. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of corporate infantilization. Yeah, it's a topic that deserves attention. And that it sparks some new ideas for how you can navigate your own career journey. Absolutely. Until next time, remember to keep learning, keep questioning. Keep pushing. And keep pushing for a workplace where everyone feels respected, valued, and empowered to do their best work. Here.